reporting. Uh, I got a strange going on out here. Something just killed my dog. Something killed your dog? My dog went flying through the air over the tree. I don't know how it did it. Okay. Damn it, I'm really confused. All I saw was my dog coming over the fence, and he was dead when she hit the ground. I didn't see any cars. All I saw was my dog coming over the fence. What are you reporting? Uh, we got someone or something crawling around out here. Did you see what it was? It was. It was standing up. I'm out here looking through the window now and I don't see anything. I don't want to go outside. Jesus Christ, you better... Sure. See ya. Hello. Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. And we are live, folks. I can't believe it. It's actually happening. And there's people here. Wayne, Leon, Joe, Pat. We've got more coming. So for the few of you guys that are already watching, thank you for coming. I didn't know if anybody was going to show up. I told Wayne earlier when we were texting, if everybody I've got invited on the show shows up with one person, we'll have it like at least 10 people in the chat. So that's a good thing, right? I really appreciate you guys being here. It's probably going to be a fun night because, A, I've never done a live show. So I'm going to do my very best to maintain. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. We're not live. I'm just checking. We're not showing up live. Yeah. Uh, it shows me. Here we are. It shows we are. Okay. I'm yes. checking them out. <laughs> Wayne, what say you? You're the one that's monitoring this. It's saying love. It's counting down up there. It's it looks like counting down, but I don't see you. I don't see any of us on YouTube. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're we're on. I'm looking at us on YouTube right now. I so, see eight or nine people that are supposedly watching us live somewhere. Or so. yeah, yeah, I don't know where that's at. <clears throat> so we're live. So hey, I, Brian, I'll take Harry Man hoaxes and hoodwinks for five hundred, please. <laughs> oh my God, you win! <laughs> I fold. See, this is exactly what I figured this was going to be with this crew. I wanted to do something special for the first time. I didn't want to just go live and it just be me talking and, you know, saying all the things that I say all the time. I wanted to have a group of people. And obviously, I couldn't invite everybody that I'd like to have on the show tonight, but I wanted to be surrounded by people that a, I enjoy talking to that stimulate the conversation and have different opinions on things because we are going to get into some stuff tonight. The main reason that I wanted you guys to come on I'll tell you this while we're kind of waiting on everybody else. There's other people that are going to show up and we're going to have a pretty decent discussion about hopefully a couple of different things. But the main thing is, is I was doing an interview recently and I had this guy talking to me and anybody who does interviews knows 90% of the time when you start talking to people and they're there for something, right? They're here for, a, I had an encounter. I saw this, I saw that you're 45 minutes to an hour into the conversation. And then you finish the interview and you're, you're bullshitting afterwards. And I always leave the recorders going. I usually record in a couple of different places. And that's what happened recently. I was talking to this guy and oh, we got a sex bot already. Uh, well, <laughs> so, like, uh, Donald's like sex bot. Somebody kick him out. <laughs> so this guy was talking and we finish up what we were talking about. And he says this whole, that sentence of, I'm going to let you in on something. Mm. And I was like, okay. And I'll play the audio. There's about seven minutes of audio here. I'll, I'll wait until everybody gets on to, to talk about it and play the audio for you guys. But it was pretty interesting because he referenced something that was going on on another show. And uh, I think Wes at Sasquatch Chronicles had had a guy on a couple of episodes back. I think it was like 897 or something. And this guy was in the military, former military. And he was talking about having this incident when he was in the military and it's so interesting because the guy that i'm talking to was at the same place at the same time in a different unit so these guys kind of were at opposite ends of what was going on and then they converged on this incident where allegedly a bigfoot was shot and killed possibly two and we'll get into that obviously i want to give steve a couple more minutes i think doug high going to stop by and say hello before i play the audio of that but 
I, just while we're waiting on them, let's talk a little bit about that. Have any of you guys had a lot of experience with people in the military saying that they've had these kind of incidents? I know that always comes up on all these shows. At least it does on mine about this vast possible conspiracy theory that everybody in the world knows about Sasquatch up and down the government. And it's this big, massive cover up that everybody knows about. I'm not sure I'm there exactly on that. I've, I've said that so many times. I think there's a little bit of that maybe that goes on. But these, it's these definitely not the case that everybody in government, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, the United States' biggest employer is the United States federal government. So that's the kind of numbers you're talking, right? Uh, those, exactly. Like, I don't think that somebody in the Social Security office knows anything about Bigfoot. It's kind of silly, um, and for that matter, I don't, I don't think the, the, uh, you know, the head of uh, Nat uh, Department of Natural Resources or whatever it's called kn knows anything about it either. Um, so yeah, it's not. It, there's not some massive cover up. That's that's absurd. Yeah, I think so. I, I think there's a lot of people who know a lot of things, and there's isolated incidents maybe that happened, but I've just never really believed that there was this vast, massive conspiracy cover up thing that was going on with Bigfoot and the government. I just, I just don't know that. Have any of you guys ever interviewed anybody from the military or had any other experiences where people, I know there was a story years ago. I've, I'm all, I've almost read it on the show in the past. It was about some, it was a big long story. I think they, somebody figured out it was a hoax. Steve can probably talk a little bit more about that. He's probably debunked it, but there was a story a while back about some Bigfoots that were shot and they were put in an ambulance and they tried to save them and blah, 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 blah. But have, have yeah, you that, that was the Mount St. Helens thing, I think during that part, but look, I was in the military. Of course I was in the Navy. So yeah, you're not seeing too many freaking Sasquatch out <clears throat> at sea. Um, so, you know, you're never going to hear that, but no, I myself personally, um, haven't ever interviewed like active duty military that said anything about Sasquatch in conjunction with their military service. I, I haven't personally. Yeah. We're not really interview people just so you know, Brian, like what, like Wayne, you, uh, Wayne is probably the only thing closest to you out of the rest of the group. We don't, we don't do a whole lot of encounter stuff. And I do actually have, have an experience with the, the United States military. Uh, Brian, were, were you able to get that picture that, that I sent you? Yeah, go ahead and start talking. I'm trying to get Steve on. He, he couldn't get the link, so I'm going to try to email the link while you're talking, and then I'll pull okay. it up and screen share in a second. Yeah, for those who don't know me, um, not only am I the host of Paranormal Odyssey, I also founded a small research organization, Bigfoot Research Organization, out of uh, southeast Tennessee about three years ago. One of our first, uh, it was our big first big expedition that we did as a group. There was about eight of us, and it was going to be at least a two-night, possibly a three-night expedition in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So we get up there. And uh, we're setting up camp. Everything's going great. We, we do our first hike. We're out, you know, walking through the woods and doing what we do. And we start hearing this rapid gunfire. And it's just semi-automatic, automatic rifles going off. And I'm thinking to myself, man, something's going on out here. There's a redneck with a lot of money out here in the middle of nowhere just having a good time. And one of our, the guys with me was former military. He said, I believe they might be doing some military exercises. So we agreed that's probably what it was. We get back to camp. About an hour goes by. And a camo Humvee pulls up. And it was, turns out it was a military exercise. This younger gentleman gets out. He's, I don't know, rank or military lingo. I wasn't in the military. I, I don't, so I don't really know the lingo or anything, but Young guy gets out, comes over. He's very personable, very pleasant, very polite, and tells us we're doing an exercise out here. 30, 45 minutes tops will be out of your hair. If they do their job right, you'll never know they were here, other than the sound of the gunfire. So we say, okay, that's fine. Everything's good. One of my 
one of our members steps up and says, well, let me just go ahead and tell you while we're here, we are, we're doing a Bigfoot expedition. We were up here looking for evidence. And I'm telling you right now that the guy's whole demeanor changed. His face dropped. Um, he wasn't friendly, polite anymore. He cut the conversation off. He went back to the Humvee and started talking to, to somebody there. And while we were talking, another Humvee pulled up. So there's two of them out there with probably 20 guys are coming out of the woods all around us. And um, he told us 30, 45 minutes he would be out, they would be out of there. Well, that 30, 45 minutes turned into them staying all night. They, about eight or 10 of them started gathering firewood. They didn't have tents. They didn't have cots. They didn't have anything to sleep on. They just got chairs out, little fold out chairs, sat down and started talking, building a fire. And they didn't have food. They had, they didn't have anything. They, it's like they weren't prepared to camp. We told them what we were doing and his demeanor changed. Everything changed. I have a picture that I sent with, I have several pictures, but that's the only one I could find to show, you know, how close these guys were to us. We're in the middle of this huge field. There's plenty of room for these guys to go. And that's where they chose to stay. Mm. Did they say who they were? Do what? what branch they were? No, uh, it was the army. Yeah, it was. I'm sorry, it was the army. Army National Guard, regular army. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, Pat. Okay. I don't remember. Just curious. I was but, trying to. I was trying to share my screen and show the photo, but you guys can go over. I'll post it on the Instagram oh. at Sasquatch Odyssey Instagram. You guys can check it out over there and see the photo that Wayne sent me and see what he's talking about. Steve, welcome to the show, man. Sorry about the mix-up with the link. My bad. No problem. This is my virgin voyage into live broadcasting. So <laughs> I think the Kentucky X-Files guys are show, showing up. So let me see if I can add Tyler. What's up, Tyler? Hey, guys. Thanks for being here, man. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about tonight is now that we've got the majority of you guys here, I think maybe, like I said, Doug may drop in here shortly, but we'll go ahead just for the, the folks that are already here and watching and wanting to know what's going on. I was sharing with them, Steve, before you got on, I was having a conversation with a guy recently, and as you know, I know you do a lot of interviews on and off camera. The, the weird shit always happens after the interview is, quote, over, and they go, oh, and by the way, there's this other thing, right? That's kind of what happened to me the other night. And this guy went into the story. So I guess the best thing for me to do now is just kind of play the audio for you guys and let you hear what he's got to say. It's about seven minutes of audio, but it's pretty much all him telling his story. And then I'll kind of tell you the backstory on the other side of that. And then we can kind of get into a little bit more about what he's saying here. So let me play the audio and then we can come back and, and kind of talk about it. I'm going to let you in on something. And I'm fine if you want to reuse it, just no names and no designators. So I did five years in the Army as a Special Operations Ranger. Back, oh God, I'm not even sure the year anymore. I was doing some training over in Fort Lewis, Washington. We're doing some uh, woodland training. And long story short, when you're doing training, especially in the States, you're given blanks. We're never ever given live ammunition, unless we're doing actually on a live, on a live range. We were, we were going out for three days overnight, and we were each issued one magazine of live rounds. In the night, we uh, stumbled across something. Three of this, uh, the six of us used our weapons. What was knocked down was incredibly large. I, because I actually had not fired my weapon, I happened to be actually in a different area, uh, my commander kept me away from the other four guys, him and the, uh, and the three guys that shot. But it was large, and it was not a bear. Literally, about an hour later, a truck pulls up, two trucks. They collect the beam. They put the rest of us in the other truck, almost all the way back to base, throw us in a room, put a form in front of us, an NDA form, and said, if you speak about this incident to anyone, we will throw your ass in jail, basically, is what it came down to. Now, unfortunately, what I heard a few 
weeks ago on another episode, Wes, the group that came up on us after that told his version of that same story on Wes's show, Sasquatch Encounters, I think it is. And as I was listening to that show, I'm like, oh my God, I was there. Now, he didn't have a non-disclosure agreement. And as far as I know, this incident is still considered top secret. But I can tell you one thing, what they took down after a couple of my buddies, as my buddy Tiny, my very good buddy Tiny, told me, he says, it looked like a gorilla. And there aren't gorillas in northern Washington. When I heard when I you know when I heard the story, because uh, my job now that I, I do I get I get a lot of time to listen to podcasts. So, um, but when I heard the story, I'm like, I remember, I, know, I was back to training in that area. Like, I know that incident, and and then everything just started coming back. I'm like, I'm like I know none of me me and the other five guys on the team never spoke a word to this. I mean, other to other than to each other, and even then it was usually when when we start, yeah. He always shut us down to stop. We can't even talk about it, about it amongst ourselves. Yeah, I mean, I I would say 90% of the stuff I did in the military in that time that was classified has been declassified. So, you know, this incident hasn't been. Nobody's talking about it. But, you know, again, I mean, I'm not saying it was a Bigfoot. I'm just saying, and I, and I will go by what my buddy Tiny told me, that it was a gorilla. But there shouldn't be gorillas up in northern... Washington, but you know, who's to say? But then, you know, like I said, I had an experience in the military that I can't say was what it was a big foot, but I mean, we, we took something down. I mean, it could have been the world's biggest trophy black bear, because there's, which was additionally the reason why they gave us live ammunition was in case we come across a bear or something where we had to drop it. But three, three guys felt the need to use all 15 rounds to to take this down and that's crazy man i've waited on somebody to tell me a story like that and now i can't use yeah. it it's so, like I said, you, can, you can use what you can i mean i mean you can you can even use location i mean you can't say it you know it's definitely a asshole, but it's a large animal and you know i mean it little it, i would say at best it probably took at least 20 rounds out of the you know 45 that were shot to take it down the guy on Wes's story, he thought it, you know, that he thought it, it it was two apples. I I only, I only remember seeing one thing, and I'm still quite a distance away in the middle of the night. So even with even with vision uh, at that time, we did not have much. And then of course, once the flashlights go on, you don't wear you don't wear night goggles. And like I said, I and this speaks a lot if I if I trust you enough to actually tell you this story. And, and part of that may be also your own personal background, but. I haven't told this to anybody, and other than you, this will go to go to my grave, unless miraculously the government is able to declassify it. But I don't foresee that happening. But yeah, I mean, there's probably you know there's things like I mean you could even say you could refer to Rick's story and I saw his name is Rick, but you could refer to Rick's story and say, and then I had somebody who's on the other side of that who can kind of verify the same stuff Rick was saying. Yeah, so he you were saying this guy that was on with Wes was like a a secondary team that came up after the incident? We were there for another unit. So we were trained in one area and his unit was training with another group of guys and they had got, they were their part was to go up and play the opposing force while they made their little camp and stuff and the other group that they were supposed to be uh, war games against the next day hadn't shown up. They they're, they're actually got cancelled. Their training had gotten cancelled. I believe because a couple of guys got sick. Anyways, so we went out. We were told, you know, we have the whole place. We can, you know, we can do our you know, evasion. We can we can do our, our operations training, all that stuff, without worry of running over other people. Because a lot of times uh, when you're doing training, if you're not going against out four, there's also other guys out there. And that's why they give us blanks so we don't kill each other. So, well, he was like, so, you know, they had heard the promotion, if I remember the story correctly. But they had heard something, so they had gone because they had heard. Oh, that's what it was. They had heard fire, and they knew it wasn't blanks because a blank and a live round are totally different. And so they had went to investigate, not knowing what was going on, and that's when they stumbled on upon what was after. So 
at this point, uh, me and my buddy and, uh, and battle buddy Mouse are our seals. Like, you guys go over there and you stay over there and you do not come over here. And that's that was the that was the incident. So, and then when Rick comes up, he talks. You know, there was four guys, and he said he thought they were Delta. They weren't Delta, but I can see why people misconstrued that even when you're in the ar- in the army. But yeah, if that incident happened, that that's real. Just by luck, I happened to be the, I happened to be the guy on the other team that was there that time. So. What he keeps referring to with this guy, Rick, that was on Sasquatch Chronicles, not Sasquatch Encounters, <clears throat> on with Wes a couple of shows back, and he shared his story very much like this guy said. They were out doing these maneuvers, and they heard gunfire. They went down, and they ended up – this guy got really close. Like The, the guy on Wes's show actually claimed that he was there. He saw a male and a female Sasquatch. The female was dying when he got there. She actually expired in front of him. Is what he said. And then these trucks came, carted them off, and they were basically all, you know, threatened, you know, going to go to jail, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, this guy that I'm talking to said he signed an NDA, but the other guy obviously didn't because he's on telling first and last name, telling his story. So obviously, this guy has asked his voice to be that's not his regular voice. I disguise the voice. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, I have to be honest. I'm one of those people that when you have one person saying something and then you've got two people saying something, you know, I didn't get the feeling from this guy. I spent a little over an hour and a half, probably two hours interviewing him face to face on stream. I didn't get the feeling that he was BSing me. You know, I don't know what you guys think. I don't know if we want to go around the horn and just kind of let's start with Steve. Let's start with Steve Coles and tell us what you think about what you just heard. Have you heard that story before Steve? And I, I, I have not heard that story before. Um, uh, what year was this supposed to have happened in? My guy couldn't remember, but I think the guy on what's his show said up around 95 or 96, something somewhere around that time. Okay. And th- that would make sense to the Fort Lewis reference because Fort Lewis is no longer Fort Lewis anymore. <clears throat> it's uh, now called um, uh, the Joint Base Lewis McCord. So Where? Where? It's called uh, Fort Lewis is now called Joint Base Lewis McCord. But it's in Washington, Pat. Washington. Washington yep. State. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, without a lot of particulars, it's it's really hard to say. Um, you know, I, I don't know what the makeup of the base would be in 1995. Uh, I guess there's ways of finding out. Um, the uh, the the only special forces group that's based out of uh, a Joint uh, Base McCord now is uh, the First Special Forces Airborne Group. So they're not part of Devru, which would be Delta. Mm-hmm. So. Um, no, I'm sorry, uh, DevGru would be the SEALs, um, but yeah. they wouldn't be part of Delta. <clears throat> that's a whole nother, um that's a whole nother command. So uh, you yeah, know what it, branch? It could, uh what branch did he did he name a branch at all ever? Yeah, he said he was in was special like, operations with the army. With the that's army. So, uh, he said he was a ranger though. Yeah, yeah Rangers Correct. special ops. Yeah. This, uh, you know, I, I don't know if the Rangers were based there um, in, in the 90s. Um, right now, it looks like they have a contingent of airborne there rather than Rangers. So, uh, but uh, no. uh, the story is too really vague and the details are very vague. Uh, there'd be a lot of ton of questions I'd have to ask to, to sort through any of the truth to it, to tell you the truth. I think it was just an interesting story to me because that's the first time I'd heard other people talk about military involvement and taking these things down and these kill teams that go in and do this Sasquatch assassination kind of thing. And I didn't get the feeling that that's what this was. I think from talking to this guy, it was more of a, oh shit moment. We're out on maneuvers and thank God they gave us some live rounds because they stumbled upon these things. And like I said, apparently they were supposed to be a male and a female. Like I said, this guy only saw or understood that there was one creature, but the other guy was very clear that he watched this other one from a very close up 
perspective take her last breath. And it was clearly a female, which I found interesting. And again, I didn't really get the vibe that that dude was BSing. You know, it's it's my, my only my only concern to that was the way it was removed. He was very vague about that. Oh, they they brought trucks up and they carted it off. Uh, if they're in the in, deep in the woods doing maneuvers, how does the truck get there? You know, it, it, it's kind of it, it's way vague. You know, if they did, you know, kill something there that's say new to them. Or even if it's not, if it's a rare thing, you would think, even though they're trying to keep it militarily a secret, uh, they would bring in some scientists to examine it before they move it. Uh, you would have, um, I, I'm sure, elements of, um, you, you may even have uh, elements of uh, the criminal investigation division of the Army come up to take evidence pictures that this was killed in accordance with safety and and all that, and not just arbitrarily killed. So, it, you know, that would happen if, if they ended up shooting a bear. They would get a visit from CID saying, "Hey, you know, uh, we just need to check the marks off that this was killed properly, as you know, like a self defense measure, than just arbitrarily shooting off a firearm." Don't forget, when you fire a live arm in the army on the continental United States, there is a ton a shit ton of reports that need to be written about that firing. Uh, I believe it's, you know, a discharge, uh, you know, discharge of weapon. If it's not in a training environment, as far as a scripted training environment, there would have to be some paperwork trail to that as well. Yeah. That was one of the things that I, that came up in my mind. I I was thinking back to my cop days and I thought, Mm -hmm. okay, you have an AD, right? An accidental discharge. There is a shit ton of paperwork, right? But you go out in the field and discharge your weapon at a person or even a dog. You shoot a dog back when I was at Atlanta Police. It was a mile long of paperwork. We we sat through in-service training every year to learn how to deal with dogs better because we had officers shooting dogs all the time on these these house calls. And so I thought, yeah, there would, there would have to be some some paperwork. You would think there was some paperwork or at least a paper trail. And I know it's just another one of those anecdotal stories. It's a good eye-catching thing, you know, when the military supposedly takes these things down. But we were talking a little bit about, before you got on, Steve, this idea from people that there's this massive conspiracy theory. And I think you and I have talked about this maybe a little bit in the past. Where where are you on this massive conspiracy theory throughout the government that everybody knows about Bigfoot and they're covering up? Steve did a video earlier. He's a double agent. I'm, I'm a double agent, yes. Well, apparently, Brian was saying in the when I was playing the audio, Leon ducked out, and he said it was actually Leon's voice that we were hearing in the background <laughs> relaying the story. So uh, there's all kinds of conspiracies going on tonight. Yeah. Um, a, conspiracy, a conspiracy against the, uh, a Bigfoot, you know, on, on a wide scale, like everybody knows about it. I, I, I have a hard time swallowing that one because a Bigfoot doesn't really uh, equal national defense. You know, um, you know, even even soci- you know, sociological, it wouldn't you know upset the bunch. Everybody would be like, "Oh, that's cool." You know, uh, it's not gonna <clears throat> it's it's not gonna upset your creationists. It's not gonna it's gonna probably enthrall your evolutionists. And uh, that, that's about the only, you know, rankling you'll get. So I don't see any reason why, uh, other than maybe kind of locally at certain local things, try to, well, we're just gonna not going to talk about it because it may affect our, our logging, for example, like the Spotted Owl did. Uh, but other than that, I, I, I don't see this wide-ranging conspiracy. That's, that seems to be the general consensus. Does anybody else have anything to add about that? I just wanted to throw this out there. I've heard like the conspiracy along the lines is that since there there's sightings all over the place, people are saying that it's big lumber companies like governments are helping them out because if they're saying that they're that these are real and the next thing you know now land that they use to harvest trees now they can't because it's protected land. That's I, I've heard that conspiracy, but I can't. I don't want to throw my head in on that because that just seems a lot. But that was that's one thing I've heard with a conspiracy around Sasquatch and the government kind of pulling the strings on it. Yeah, that's 
that's absolutely absurd. That no such thing would happen. Lumber is too important. It is it is one of our biggest natural resources, you know, next to next to uh, energy, uh, like fossil fuel kind of energy to turn turbines for electricity. Uh, lumber is way too important. There's no replacement for it, wide scale. I work in the lumber industry. I'm part of the lumber industry, and I understand the importance of it. I don't care if aliens are found uh, being, you know, a natural part of the forestry environment. The lumber companies ain't stopping what they're doing for Sasquatch or anything else. Yeah. I, I don't care what happened one time in California, you know, with an, with an owl or whatever, or a condor. Um, that's just a, a complete fallacy to think that even the discovery of an upright walking hominid would somehow wipe out the lumber industry. It's absolutely impossible. I promise you if lumber is too important to humanity. Yeah. I, I, I would think that uh, the government would be quicker to pull the trigger on them stopping lump, uh, the lumber production than the lumber companies. The lumber companies would be actually more in tune of, oh, that's just a bunch of just, this is our company line. It doesn't exist you know, push it away. If you see tracks, sweep them up. I would say maybe the lumber company would do that. But but the government, the government has time, shown time and time again that it will it, it will intervene on behalf of the endangered animal rather than try sure. to say, oh, we're, we're just going to keep it going. So. Yeah, but not not to destroy modern modern civilization in mm -hmm. actuality. I mean, you, yeah, well, you just can't, you cannot right. remove lumber from humanity. Yeah, exactly. Across the board, absolutely not. No. You just well, there was, there was one other thing. I, this was a small thing. I, I can't remember. I think it was a guest that we talked to and they were saying that it was a reason of their hair that the government want. Is that they are saying that it's an act of camouflage and I've heard that, and I, I, I don't know. Like, it's, and where did they? And what slab uh, yeah. was this discovered? You yeah, know, that's what I, I was mean, like saying. Like, somebody was saying that it's active camouflage. That I get. I was like, we, I, me and Denny were even talking about it at one point. Where, what would cause that to change? Like they were saying it would change colors to go around an environment. And I'm like, okay, what? Where's your evidence? Where? Like, what was your process of getting to that conclusion? If it leads, we can kill it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's just, I mean, that's like everything in the Bigfoot world about trying to fill voids. That's just like imagination. Yeah, and wet mammal can do that. Yeah. Yeah, wet, wet mammal can do that. It can yeah, change I mean, their color. And maybe they can. But maybe maybe they can. And maybe that's something we don't understand. But it's still, to, to say that without the proof is just sort of to imagine it. Hey Pat, so so I've been experimenting with hair. What is supposed Bigfoot hair? We don't even know if it came off of Bigfoot, but it does reflect light. It does absorb certain frequencies of light from the studies I've been doing here. True, there is some things about because there's hairs well, that are interesting. That I I, I, no, I know no, I know no, what you got going no, on. Doug. Yeah, no, nothing like that, Pat. You're, you're all the hair is consistently without a medulla. It's like a right. fiber optic tube, and it seems to pick up light that's reflected near it. So that's a truth. I mean, if the hairs that I have, and I have many, 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 maybe a thousand um, that are very consistent, you know, tapered in, no medulla, human scaling, blah, 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 blah. They can't be anything else, literally. Um, you kind of know what they're not from. You, you don't know for sure what they're from. But in every case the hair does reflect and absorb uh, colors around it. That I can vouch for. So I do it at literally almost every week. <clears throat> so there could be some grain of truth to what Tyler was saying. Right, a grain of truth. A grain. Yeah, we don't right. know. As, a, as opposed to, you know. But it's a hand. physical, yeah, but it's a physical trait because of the hair is a fiber optic tube. I wouldn't. And where we get into where we get into science fiction is that can change. Yeah. Yes. Why would they go after a Bigfoot one and know that when they could do that with an octopus? An octopus can change its shape and its pattern. Why don't we yeah. figure that one out for science? Because that's can an great. octopus's DNA interact with ours that easily though. 
No, we're not. It we're not seems like it that. would be a big bridge to cross. You know what I mean? No, well, but it's a but it's a super ability that does exist in the natural world. Yeah, is what Leon said. That's yeah. that's Leon's point, and, right. and there's nothing I supernatural about a cuttlefish, right. even so though it acts supernatural. Sorry, Doug. Sorry, Doug. No. Going back to the original thing, the original video and stuff like that, and I look at that totally different than most of you guys will look at that because I do body language. I also do audio, you know, audio, like when someone's saying stuff because you're interviewing them on the phone. You know, what are the markers looking for? This topic to me is kind of like the mosquito in the tent <laughs> at nighttime. You know, you hear it all the time. It buzzes around your head all the time. You try to kill a freaking thing. To, in other words, get some solid stuff about it, and then you keep hearing these stories, these stories. And it's not just this topic. It's a whole bunch of topics on what Sasquatch is, people's ideas and stuff. So yeah. the question I have, I was raised on military bases my whole life. So I don't understand one thing, first of all, and it might be different. I'm in Canada. You guys are in the States. It might be different. We never have live ammo on site unless there are people who are appropriated to do it. The, mil the, mil the MPs, for instance. The reason for that is cross-contamination. Is if, you, if there's a crisis that's happened and you grab the wrong, or you're in training and you grab the wrong ammunition, I know it's mar It's even marked. I mean, it's usually marked. So I have lots of, like Steve says, I have a lot of questions that, that just don't fit right with me. Uh, I, I I don't understand. Okay, so if there's one group of people that do have live ammunition, and one people that aren't doing live, who are who are those people uh, that are bringing that that story into it? Uh, I'd like to hear that other guy's story. That, I agree. Why why is one guy? You know, now again, it's different. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But it's as far as I know, in Canada, you don't sign a, you know, a, <laughs> you don't sign a. <laughs> What is it? A non-disclosure agreement? Are you going to sign this non-disclosure? You know, either the guy comes up and he gives an order. The commander says, "Don't talk to anybody about this." You don't sign the document. Uh, and then Wayne's story earlier, he shared about that one where these guys were in the bush and that and they're shooting off. His story was that Wayne ex uh, not expressed, but shared with us was that you know I heard a lot of bam 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 one shot massive paperwork, lots of shots, massive paperwork. One reason to hang around the tent is going to be uh, hang, hang around with you guys is to find out what you all know without you knowing. Because if, if they fired off arms where they're not supposed to be firing off automatic uh, live ammo, they're in big shit. And I don't care who it is. I mean, I deal with deception all the time when it comes to, well, it doesn't matter who it is. But, you know, I just, I have a hard time without, like Steve says, is, Man, there's so many questions I'd be firing that guy, asking the right questions. It's a lot of problems. People aren't used to interviewing people. They they usually usually have your hope up of your cognitive bias that this one might be a real one to catch. But you're not looking for that. You're looking for what they're not telling you that they should be telling you, the way they're telling it, the way they're talking too. You, you know, in, in that uh, it, 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 you guys probably had a harder time picking up. Maybe not because of the voice change in it, but he had a rhythmic rhythm to him. If you listen to it again, you'll hear that rhythm. And that tells me for sure, we're pretty sure somebody who has a natural rhythm to it means he has shared the story more than often because it has a natural rhythm to it. Because if you're talking to someone who doesn't have a natural rhythm that has an unnatural experience, he's not going to have a rhythm to it. His breathing is going to be up here, not down here in his belly. So either he was prepared to tell you beforehand, he said to himself, he's planning on doing this show with you, so he wants to make it sound as real as possible. I could also tell in the, in the, what he was talking about, that's why he shut my camera off, because I just wanted to hear the audio of how he was talking. The way he was talking about the experience didn't make sense to me, because why would you have this one group that has to sign a CD, or, or whatever that freaking form you guys are always talking about? <laughs> You know, and that's the guy that those people were the ones who were supposed to have been there for it. Is that correct? The guy that was on Wes Grimmer's show, was that correct? That guy was the one who saw the Sasquatch and the female Sasquatch? That's correct, yes. Okay. Those are the ones you should be hearing. Well, you're not going to, if you, if you guys do in the States, I, again, I don't know, I'm in Canada, uh, in the military, if you're going to have a, you know, not just a closure agreement, that guy should be saying, why is this guy having it? And, that, and he's not even there. And, and in the area, but I mean, if he's not there, then I think the bodies are not there. 
I don't questions I would have had. I don't understand why the the term NDA ever even got. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That. yeah. that's, that's um, NDA I, is not a military term. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's the other thing too is the language doesn't seem to fit. We're, we're declaring this top I mean, secret. And that's all you have to say. Yeah. And you don't sign the NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. And if, if I can if quickly, if I can add one more thing uh, to this story that, that I was telling before, you know, when we got started, um, I got this story secondhand from a person that got it secondhand. So after all this happened with me and my, and my organization, a few weeks after that, I'm doing a show, a live show, and I'm interviewing Mr. Ken Drawer. He comes on and he's telling me, talking about one of his books and everything. He had no, he had never heard the story before that, that what we had encountered with the military. And he just, he offers the story about talking to a gentleman one time that was in the military. And again, I don't know military lingo, so forgive me. But he was in the military and he did a lot of his training in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And he told Ken that when he got his field guide or whatever they're given, that it did say in there what to do if you come across a Sasquatch. Again, I got that second hand from a person that got that second hand, so I don't know how much yeah, that's, there that's, is. To it. There is. Uh, actually, there is. If you've ever talked to, uh, uh, he's now retired, Sergeant Todd Neese. He'll be the first one to tell you that that, that document does exist. Uh, I've seen it somewhere before. It used to be on an old computer, and I actually had a copy of it, but it, so why? Why does that exist? Because well, they're they're acknowledge they have yeah, to acknowledge the possibility if they yeah, do I exist. Think, this is what it is. is the publishing date for I, that, that question all of that. Is a long, long time ago. So you know, uh, I, I maybe it, maybe it exists. The mosquito in the tent scenario. I, I, I knew somebody who knew somebody. I'm not the devil advocate here. Trust me, you guys. I mean, I've seen the Sasquatch, but I'm I, that. This is not, not my, my point on that. That my point is just from what I'm hearing from the one story with the other story from West Germer and that that like you, Brian, you're talking about is the differential. I'm also listening to that tone that he's saying it in. I'm also listening to it. There's something that doesn't. There's something that doesn't jive with me. I wish it would be true, but again, it's like every other story we hear. How do you anchor it down into something that we can use as channel providers for our viewers? Uh, something that's a, a little more solid. Now. What 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 was everybody's concern? I missed the the um was it video testimony? Audio. Wait. It was video testimony. It, <laughs> it, it was audio. audio. It was oh, audio. audio. Okay, yeah, I missed I it. Have, I do have him on video, but I'm not, obviously not going to show that because he sure. has to change his voice and, yep, and protect yep. his identity. But what he, was? I'm just curious what everybody's um, consensus was. I, well, you pretty much got it, I think, from Leon. I think the consensus okay. consensus across the board was. It's a possibility, right? Possibility, I, left, but... I, I got to talk to the guy. I got to look him in the face. So. I personally felt he was being sincere about his story, mm -hmm. you know, because if you pay attention, Leon and, and Steve will sort of, they're the two most, in my opinion, skilled at this, obviously, and, and detecting if somebody's telling the truth or not. But he, some of the things that he said, he wasn't putting himself there. He never said, he even said, I can't say it was a Bigfoot, you know, it could have been a really large bear, but I'm going more off of what this guy told Wes on Sasquatch Chronicles because he was very detailed. The other guy that was the part of this were these military maneuvers that they were doing at Fort Lewis. This one guy heard shooting, right? And his his unit runs down and they find these two Sasquatches dead. And this guy that I played the audio from was on the other end of that. His unit was the ones who actually shot these things. So there are some things that don't really line up. This guy never got close enough to identify and say that this was really a Bigfoot. Now the guy on Wes's show actually said he was there when the, it was a male and a female, according to him. And he was there and watched the female take her last breath. She expired in front of him. So it, it's just interesting to me, the dichotomy of having these two people that were supposedly at the same place at the same time. And as far as I know, they don't know each other. Like he doesn't know this guy. He, he, he doesn't even know if the guy's real name is Rick. I mean, he gave yeah. his first, the guy on Wester show gave his first and last name and his rank in the military. So he's full blown out of the closet. I saw two Bigfoot get taken down at Fort Lewis. My guy's a little more like I'm, I'm, he seemed afraid. He seemed afraid of his anonymity being exposed. Mm -hmm. 
So I told him I'd do everything I could to protect him from that happening. Yeah. And I didn't, you know, I'm a pretty good judge of character. My bullshit meter is pretty good. And I just didn't get the, yeah. didn't get the bullshit effect from him. So well, you know. some things are going to slip through the cracks. It's about what, again, you got you take do. Human, the you human, do oh, when, I, when I'm looking at body language and again, and body language is a little of a tough person telling the truth or lying. Time tells you that body language tells me whether the person owns what they're saying. <laughs> And that, so yeah. you have to know how to look at that. You don't just, you know, a lot of people mm -hmm. all body language is bad. Let like, me explain it. Another, I mean, no. there, there's like, I mean, the thing uh, tomorrow during your day, many people scratch their head like this or like this. Now, is there a mosquito that's around North America that only bites here and here for only human beings? <laughs> no, but there's a reason why we this or this or this or this or this or this. I mean, if I do this, you guys probably know immediately I want to say something, but I'm, I can't say it yet because I'm either holding, holding my tongue or disagreeing. If I'm doing this, I'm disagreeing is what you're saying. You know, I, that's why I'm I making it right up here so you can all look at me and do your your thing that you, we all have. We all you know, talk about uh, this night on Joe's show about the... I so, tap. so I Steve, I'm not even worrying. The tapping one is your itch. I tap that one. I, your I, I, I have the three things. <laughs> well, what, Steve, Steve, I, I really, I really respect your opinion. What's, what was your bottom line? <laughs> well, like I said, I, 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 I remain that we can't prove that it didn't happen. We can't <laughs> prove that it did happen. But what we have is some, some very interesting things going on. Uh, you know, I brought up all those points about paperwork and maybe, you know, all that stuff. But we also have to remember there's an armor on the base that has to account for all the rounds. Uh, that base would probably go on lockdown. Uh, that would be my guess, because they would have to bring it to the base, I would assume. Um, so the base would have to go on lockdown. That would have been something, you know, nobody in or out until we contain this. Uh, that's that. That's what happens when things go go sideways uh, on a military base. Um, and somebody had said in there that, well, this was 30 years ago, and sometimes terminology gets lost. Have you ever talked to some of these veterans? They know their terminology left right. I got corrected by a marine because I called them an ex marine. Uh, uh, no, sir, we're former marines. And my MOS was this, and you know, throwing out all these military terms. He was in for four years. So they, 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 cause they get drilled that terminology. So um, they, they, they don't necessarily lose their terminology over years. They're actually, they actually take quite, quite great pride in that, knowing that terminology. So that, that, those are my concerns. And the fact that, well, you know, we, they were out doing maneuvers and they're in the woods, deep woods. And, you know, it was, it was uh, exfiltrated from the area. All these trucks came up and took it away. Well, how did the trucks get into the deep woods? And that's my that's my concerns. <laughs> it, it, can I say it's a hoax? No. Can I say he's making it up? No. Could he have heard the the Sasquatch Chronicles and started formulating this plan and head? Sure. There's just not enough information on the table about it yeah. to make a decision. He could have went back a lot further than that. I could. I just found. I mean, I just made myself a folder full of Sasquatch stories from that same area. Uh, it always revolves around somebody shooting a Sasquatch or two Sasquatch or, you know, a Sasquatch attacking them or they saw a Sasquatch and it's always in the same place. There's even a helicopter there that's nickname is Bigfoot. Um, yeah, I mean, I've literally this whole time, that's why I haven't been talking, guys. Sorry, but I've just been digging, just literally dredging all this crap out. Yep. It looks like the most prominent uh, time this appeared was on the facts by the facts uh, how to hunt dot com uh, oh. about a year ago. Oh. It went viral there, and there's people in the comments blowing it up. There's like 80 different people corroborating the story, but I don't think that many people were actually there. So I don't. Oh, just saying okay. this story is really popular. In okay, interesting. Um, <laughs> I want to know more. I know I want to know more from you. Um, I can't see what your name is, dude. Sorry, the screen's too small. <laughs> it's Denny. It's Denny from the Kentucky X Files. But before Denny, we go there, 
Before we Sorry, go there, I apologize, Pat. I apologize, Denny. There's so many people that I actually can't see. You're good, man. <laughs> You're good, um, Pat. Hang on. Doug Doug has got to go and do his own live show here in about 10 minutes. All right. So I want to I want to give him his due diligence here. Thanks for stopping by, Doug. I appreciate you popping yeah. in. I know you. You're a busy man. Thank you. Who do you and Alex have on the show tonight? What can they expect over on Untold Radio at 8? Oh, um, we have Mark DeWorth. Um, he's the organizer of the Ohio Bigfoot Conference. And uh, which is, I believe, the biggest conference in the U.S. But Mark is a researcher, so we're going to get into that. Awesome. We're probably going to get into it a little bit, Doug, on Michael Freeman's book, the the Freeman yeah. footage. Yep. Have you guys released that already? Is the book out? Yes, sir. Oh, they're the Bigfoot files. He is no, my. No, so as far as the footage, I know I have a copy of the footage that you worked on from the, the Freeman footage, is that available only with the book? Is it out there in the zeitgeist yet? What's going on with the Freeman footage where everybody can see the enhanced footage that you worked on for 20 plus years? Yeah, it's in the book. And I, I guess I've never discussed with Alex and Blaine if they're going to release it. So I don't know. And I have no opinion. It's really up to Michael. He's the owner of it. Um, but for sure it's in the book. And I, I, to me, the most important footage in the book is the baby lift, which, you know, and I've been looking at this footage for uh, <laughs> how many years now? Th uh, almost, you know, 35, 30, 40 years. Plus years. Yeah. yeah. And so, and now it got enhanced. We ended up buying software from the government to actually do the enhancements. Um, oh, it was the latest and greatest. The agent. The greatest and neatest um, AI software. And <clears throat> anyhow, it's it's pretty amazing. It just, you know, shows it so distinct at this point. I don't know what it could be. Unless Paul was operating a marionette up in a tree. But, I mean, literally it would have to be that level. And I just, you know, I don't think Paul was that sophisticated. Definitely not. To do something like that. So whatever, but um, I think the book's just amazing. <clears throat> Probably the most amazing part is the diary. His whole diary over many, many years is in the book, and you can listen to it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. You guys go over to Hangar One Publishing and check it out. Check, yeah. check out the book and support Michael and what Doug and Blaine and Alex are doing. Doug, yeah, thanks, thanks so much. For thanks so much. I you got to dip out. but Thanks, thanks Brian. I appreciate it. Thanks, you, everybody. It's good seeing everybody. Bye. Yeah, you, Doug. Bye, bye. See you, Doug. Pat, what were you going to say? Go ahead. Uh, with yeah, your I want to know. I want to know way more about Danny's real time research. He even said like this story. Like, wait, which story? This like this story, and and what is the area like exactly? Are we talking? Do we know the exact area, Danny? Um. Okay. So what I did was as soon as you guys started naming off the fort and telling me the area. I just did a simple search and I found the one that I was familiar with me and Tyler actually listened to the story over a year ago on how to hunt. And I'm just saying it's like the, like the game of telephone, you know, it just seems like it changes a little bit, a little bit, but it always hangs around this, this Fort Lewis, Washington area. And it's, I don't know. I don't know if that helps it or not, but I'm saying until it's fact, it's a story to me. You know what I mean? Right. I have to so go with a story. You're, you're saying I mean, there's there's a lot of military Bigfoot shooting stories, even to the point where a helicopter is named something. Sometimes it's that. a truck. Or, or, or <laughs> sometimes it's a truck, truck. Sometimes it's a helicopter. And, so it's uh, the same story, sometimes though, both. Right? So it's the same story, though. But you're, are you suggesting that the stories kind of evolve because of the different narrations, or those are individual stories of different experiences that people have had? I don't know if it's the same story or if, or if somebody's right. hearing it somewhere and they're, you know, putting their spin on it or if these people are actually cooperating it. But it was the amount of people on his comment section that were, yeah, man, you know, I was there, this man, you know, I saw this and this. And I'm like, man, there's a lot more people commenting that are, than there is mentioned in the story. Right. So I'm yeah, like, exactly. how many people were actually there, you know? Obviously, it, it couldn't have it couldn't have been hundreds of people because I mean, I'm saying it, if 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 we're yeah. going off of what I'm looking at, it was there should be hundreds of witnesses all over urban the internet. Legend, urban yeah. legend. 
You ever seen the what was it the the, the dam man. you know where the welders go down and to work on the dam and there's fish down there as big as a big as a car. Every state has it. Volkswagen. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. It's the Volkswagen. Yeah. Or the I'm just saying. Gators in the sewers of New York City, or the the cemetery with the dripping blood on the roof of the car. <laughs> yeah, it's all, it's yeah all we fun. we get into that right so let's talk a little bit about evidence let's shift gears a little bit away from i think we can all agree that that story is an anecdotal story you know i personally believe the guy because like i said i, I had a, almost a two-hour conversation with him i didn't get the the feeling that his story was necessarily made up so but well, I, there is a lot of there is a lot of things out there in the zeitgeist right i i you know, i i i i would like to address the one thing that never got addressed which to me is the most important, uh, which is the, like, what in the hell, what happened? Like, so you, like, if, let's just throw it out there that four, four guys, a small squad is doing what? Exercises in the woods somewhere out there. And what, you know, the great elusive badass Sasquatch did what? Like decided to attack them? Uh, to attack four people. I, I'm not sure we have one account where four people at the same time have ever seen a Sasquatch, much less been attacked by them. It, you, you know what I mean? Like, so the, like the, the, like four badass dudes armed to the teeth somehow come across two Sasquatch and blow their brains out. How does that happen? When everything else we know about anecdote doesn't even, it's not even in the same ballpark. It's not even the same state. So, I mean, how does that ever happen? It, yeah, I, I thought this. That's the head scratcher, man. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And I, I didn't yeah. get the story of this guy didn't fire his weapon, so he wasn't right there. There were six guys in the unit, including, including the commander. So there was a CO and then five guys. And I, I don't know. I can't answer that question for you. Yeah, no, I, that it well my what what <laughs> I'm not looking for an answer to the question. What I'm saying is is it doesn't jive with any other kind of anecdote we understand. So therefore I tend to just kind of toss it out immediately. It's like it's it's sort of a nothing burger because that's so extraordinarily unusual ha with anything Sasquatch. Like how convenient that two Sasquatch attack the best of the best and get killed <laughs> when, when you know you have hunters and people with guns that see them all the time and and that in the chat always very the chat. consistent always very consistent is like the last thing they wanted to do was shoot it right you know um i can yeah. you're, you're calling bs i hear you pat i hear no, you i'm I, i'm yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards probably not true because it just doesn't match up with uh, it does actually doesn't match up with any consistent anecdote. And it, it's rather it's just a rather extraordinary, you know, kind of far fetched out there thing that. But yeah, I mean, like, that's why I immediately go to probably not true. Yeah. So, well, there's two things I want to talk to why you are. We're, we're focused on you, Pat. Let me let me ask you a couple of questions. Sure. First and foremost, I've talked about it on the show a couple of times with different people, and I think this is a really good group to talk about some of the things that you've experienced. I've referenced it before with the the pareidolia that goes on in the community and the issues with these red circle squatches. And I was fascinated with your little social experiment that you did. It's been a, probably a couple of months ago. I thought it was freaking brilliant, man. You Thank went you. out and took, took some photos and you posted them on your page and you reached like 70,000 plus people in a very short amount of time. And all you did was take some basic pareidolia photos and draw some red circles and never use the word Bigfoot or Sasquatch. And you put it out there, right? Yep. So let's talk about this a little bit with you guys. I've, I've had this conversation individually with the majority of you guys as far as these red circle squatches and the paranormal or the pareidolia phenomenon that exists inside the phenomenon of Bigfoot. <clears throat> and I, I frankly, I don't get it. I've, I've had such a difficult time with this, but let's talk a little bit about those photos that you took and what was your experience when you put that out there in the zeitgeist and what you got back in return? 
Hey, real quick, uh, Brian, just to in case this comes up as an issue for you, um, I did. Uh, I did since I'm a moderator. I did time out Bigfoot Truth because he was getting rather disrespectful to everybody. So, by, by the way, Joe, up. Big Trick Truth and this guy, oh my, OMG, bugs and insects. That's all, Mister Duffy. So, oh, well, I'm they, glad they need to go. Ass out, so. They need to go. Okay. Well, here Good we go. Job, welcome, welcome to the live world, Brian. Uh, I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, moderators are, for you will be important. So, yeah, that tripped me out. And I, and I had a weird sort of different motivation for that. It was actually beyond pareidolia. It, more, it was more about hoaxing is, is really where my brain was with that and I thought about this and how should I do this for a long long time I was going to make a big production out of it and all this and then one day I'm walking the dogs and, and I just said well here's this wood line I'm literally just going to do my own experiment and take pictures to see if I can get Bigfoot faces out of it and 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 I objectively did to me to my own self I'm like, oh, you know, like that kind of looks like a face. And they weren't great. Like I've seen better, right? Um, but it, it blew me away that my simple little experiment that I did while walking the dogs in just a very flippant moment, tur like actually turned into something. Um, and it was, there was some validation there, I felt. I, I felt there was some serious validation, but ultimately... Um, that whole experiment is more about purposeful hoaxing than it is pareidolia. Because th those are two different things. Um, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about purpose, purposeful hoaxing. And I, to your credit, your experiment, I talked about it on the show. And frankly, it pisses me off because we're all in this community. We all do different things, but we all bust our ass to produce, I think just about everybody here produces some type of show on YouTube or some kind of a podcast. And none of my shit ever gets 75,000 people reached in a day or two with a red circle squatch, right? I put out legitimate shows with, with great stories, just like Wayne does, right? Denny and Tyler and Josh do a fantastic job at, at Kentucky X-Files. The people they interview have phenomenal stories. Steve does the majority of his stuff busting hoaxers, and he doesn't get 75,000 people clapping when he busts somebody like Todd Standing or somebody else that's purposely doing a hoax. But you just draw a circle around some freaking leaves and a, and a tree, and all these people see it. It's the most baffling thing in my mind. I, I can't wrap my brain around it. Steve, it I saw some of the things you were doing recently about the, the boat Bigfoot hoax. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that. I watched that for the first time today, and I had not seen the video. And I saw your breakdown, and I thought it was brilliant. So talk a little bit about this hoaxer and what you discovered in that video. Well, it first came out uh, by a particular organization that had actually most likely had snagged it off the Internet. They reversed uh, – they basically reversed it. Uh, my guess is was to avoid, you know, copyright detection. Uh, made some, oh, these boaters, uh, they, they, for whatever reason, they got traction, got picked up by Coast to Coast, which then picked up on some of the news wires. <clears throat> and they, they turned around and they basically said, oh, yeah, well, these boaters were out boating. And, uh, but they're, they're unidentified. And the uh, fact is, there was only one boater. Fact is that I was able to identify them in probably about 10 minutes by just looking at the interactions on the page. Um, and the, the other uh, canary in, the, in the, the cage there is that somebody had asked them, well, why did you flip it? Because they, they took my first video and said, why did, why did you flip it? And they turned around and, well, we wanted to protect the location. Well, how do you know where the location is? You're the one who said the witnesses were unidentified. And in saying it's in northern Ontario, 
uh, like I said, there's thousands of lakes in northern Ontario. I asked Leon about that. <laughs> um, it's like saying, oh, it's in North Texas or even North Rhode Island. I mean, you don't know where the hell to start. So, um, so that was, that was, had nothing to do of the, to me, the originality of the video. So obviously when we found the real video, I had to retract because at that time we had no story, no, no, uh, no audio. So that really put a damper in things. Cause the first thing you need to look in any video or piece of evidence is the story behind it. Without a story, there's nothing to tell. Um, so it, you know, it turns out that that there is an audio. The audio I played, and it, it sounds kind of the the person's lack of astonishment seeing a Sasquatch for the first time is just so underwhelming. It's very um, yeah. So then we start breaking down some of the the things, and there's some arguments whether or not that's a boat wake or not. I believe it's a boat wake. Pat, that was pretty strong. Yeah, that was a boat wake. Yeah, yeah, that it's definitely a boat wake. Yeah. I'm an experienced uh, ten year laker. That was a freaking boat wake, and it came from the island. And yeah. Steve, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, yes, we, as soon as you said, "Look, the boat wake came from the island just now," I was like, "Okay, we're done." <laughs> the host. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then somebody had brought up the objection that, well, that that boat wouldn't have gotten that close to the rocks. But in the unedited version of it's the film, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the unedited version of the film, you can see he pulls almost within twenty feet of this very shallow water to where you could just hop out of the boat and probably slosh you can over. Sure, you can shore a fishing boat. Man. It's yeah. not that hard. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So then we started taking a look at the 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 uh, subject. Now, none of that, despite Thinker Thunker saying that that tree is 50 feet tall because that's what they are. That guy. Um, what, what we decided to do is take the size of the creature and just give it different random values, 10 foot, 9 foot, 8 foot, 7 foot, 6 foot, and take that same size arrow and put it along the ground. So then we know if, if it's a 10-foot Sasquatch, that area is 30 feet. If it's 9, and, and we, we did that. So then we counted all the steps that it had taken. And it took 9 steps to get through that clearing. So then based on if it's a 10-foot, 9-foot. So it, it basically came down to it was either... Uh, for a 10-foot Sasquatch would be extremely large. Uh, you're probably talking seven, eight foot at most. So it didn't really come out to be uh, the, the, the the step length. It did not appear to be anything greater. The eight An eight-foot Sasquatch would have had a 32-inch, uh, I believe a 32-inch step length, which the average human step length is 30 inches. So for an eight-foot Sasquatch only taking, you know, only a couple of inches over what, uh, human could be, and so on and so forth. So we knew that 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 the step length was not consistent. And whether or not you subscribe to the Patterson Gimlin film, I put that out there as an example. But the the, the Patterson Gimlin uh, creature in that film had a stride of uh, fifty one point seven four inches. I've been an, I've been on a trackway myself that that the stride was about forty eight inches. So, or the, the, the step length was about 48 inches. So, I, I, you know, there's no way this is, appears to be a human in a costume. And then uh, I reached out uh, to the channel that posted that on another one because, hey, the comments for that Bigfoot video were turned off. So I went to another one of his videos and I said, hey, can you please contact me? I'd like to know more information. Within 30 minutes, my contact, my, my, my uh, comment was erased. So I did it a second time and it was erased again. So sent an email out and that uh, went unresponded as well because I tracked the guy's email down and that went, that went down as, uh, you know, unan unanswered. So all this, Steve, all of this, like, boom, the biggest thing in the Bigfoot world this week. Because some dude wanted to play a prank on his friend Shelby. Exactly. Yep. That's how easy it is. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Hey, hey guys, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I had an hour to spend with you, and uh, I, I've got to run. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, guys, but it, it was great hanging out with you. Thank Take you, care, Wayne. Good meeting you. 
Everybody go over and check out the Paranormal Odyssey on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcast. Wayne does a fantastic job over there. Thanks, buddy. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Be good, guys. We'll see you. Take care. I was going to go to Pat, but Pat just took himself off the... (laughs) I was going to talk to Pat about his recent wood knocking incident out in the woods, but hopefully he'll rejoin us. Does anybody else have anything to add as far as the the hoaxes and the pareidolia? I just, I just, Steve, you deal with it all the time. I don't know how you do it, dude. You do a phenomenal oh. job and you, you bust these folks that are hoaxing. I mean, in the end, at the end of the day for you, is it, do you feel the most hoaxes that you find are people hoaxing to get rich they want five minutes of fame or what what do you think causes what's the driving force behind all this we see in the bigfoot community right now it it appears to me the the paradigm always shifts and right now the biggest uh thing that puts the hoaxes out there are clickbait artists that grab these things and give them notoriety they're probably started off as pranks for like a Shelly that this guy was trying to do. But thanks to some, somebody trying to make a buck off of uh, letting this video go viral and try to make it sound like this is something it's not. Um, and rather than do an investigation, even though they call themselves an organization and just puts it out there and Hey, I just made myself 500 bucks, 800 bucks, you know, and that's the reason why, because these things start to build traction and start getting viral. So you got to combat that. That's the the number one reason why these things get out of control. It's like the Coyote Peterson, right? <laughs> Denny and Tyler and I have talked about Coyote Peterson on the show when I had these guys on. And it's like that that skull that he, you know, this this Ugh. ordered from Amazon or wherever. He beat me by 10 seconds. Right. I, I could <laughs> jump it at the bit. So I figured I would go ahead and bring it up. I mean, that stuff just baffles me. I mean, this guy has tons of followers. He's on television. He's making money. And it's just all of a sudden, it's like, I'm just going to start this hoax about Bigfoot. And I just, well, Brian, I, I told you my theory. He, well, tell he ran it, out of shit to sting him. Well, this you is know, he's like stuff. Everything in the, out here has bit me or stung me. So what, what can I do next? Let's. Yeah, he popped up on my call. Instagram yesterday and he was, he had his hand in inside this thing of live yellow jacket stinging the shit out of him and i'm like and this is what people are watching i don't i don't understand it this is the man that's going to lead a bigfoot station yeah look at tiktok five minutes the brain's being programmed right now i mean for not even five minutes a minute it used to be two hours then an hour then a half hour look at the ads on youtube alone you got to go through a five second video or a 10 second video the problem with that is it programs the brain to not let people be due diligence. It's not that people are stupid or not, but the co- the Kool-Aid out here, and that's why we kind of formed that, uh, what I call it the Honey Badger Network, which is, look at where a group of our channels are, you're not going to get sensationalism on any of our channels because that's not what we're about. So we don't expect the, to have a high, you know, when you're on YouTube, the, the algorithm, YouTube, everyone's pushing on so any type of social media is numbers that matter. No, truth matters. Facts matters. Do you want to or don't you want to know what you're looking at? In order for me to answer that question is I have to educate myself. And this is the other thing is education to a lot of people because it's, you know, if it's a five minute like Steve's video he did out with a funny educational one. Uh, uh, the book while boys there, Jerry did up one for Santa Claus and he had a little Muppet there and somebody thought it was me because I use that high voice when I'm talking sometimes. And uh, and the problem is there's, there, uh, we, there's this, well, there's no levity either. You know, the seriousness, these people that are online, they, they just attack you. you. You guys are just being so critical. You're being so critical or, or Nikki shows she's got a great part there. So show me what you've got, you know? And, and the problem is we've had dump trucks of dump trucks of dump trucks of everyone showing and even repeated dump trucks, which you guys heard me say before, of the same stuff. I would just watch videos this week that were on five years ago. And people are saying, what do you think of this one? You know, thinking, my God, we've already hashed this one through. But the next generation doesn't know. So it's up to us as if we're serious about the topic of wanting to get them on film after 55 years, which we haven't yet think of this terrible question. I ask people all the time, which is tell me five videos that you buy 
That is a Sasquatch. Did you move to the closet, Pat? <laughs> yeah, I had to relocate. Yeah, Sorry, no, he, okay. he went. Yeah, he went through the portal there. Uh, or, or if you get, if you don't have a video, what are the? You know, if people ask you that question, you ask ourselves. I mean, we have to be honest about the whole thing. What can we really point to? Nothing. I mean, I point to certain things that when people say, "Well, why do you keep doing what you're doing, Leon?" It's because I don't. Exp I can't explain the tracks. I understand tracking. I understand tracks. I understand energy distribution into trackways. I've come across tracks. I don't make, they don't make sense to me. Yes, I had a sighting when I was younger, but I don't, that, that's when I was younger. I want to see one now today in my own brain. The other thing I don't have an understanding for because I deal with mental health is people who have PTSD because of an experience with a Sasquatch. Not prior PTSD, some do, and they're overlapping the experience with what they feel is happening to them. You know, and I always say to people, you know, whatever their feel, what, 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 looking at their body language is, they are, they believe what they're saying, but it's, again, they may be believing what they're saying, so the body language isn't responding that way, but the, you can also see the doubt parts, if you know micro expressions in people, and, and again, you can't just sit down for 20 minutes and have, you know, like, that's why I would say time tells you whether or not a person tells you the truth or not. Body language tells you whether or not you should have warning flag up. And that's what Steve's really good at too. It's and well, I think everybody that uh, I'm sorry, you guys, I don't know you guys from KY, KYXF. Sorry, <laughs> my brain had a little sexual glitch there when I read the first part of your title. You know, <sighs> KY. <laughs> we yes. get it a lot. We yeah. get it a lot. <laughs> You're not the first that... person. In... Huh? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah. KY Jelly. What are you doing? Jelly Miles. Oh, good. I've been wondering about that. I got this uh... problem. <laughs> But when we were coming up with the name, I was like, they're probably going to make this connection. No, oh, yeah. Ah, no, they're not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There was ah. a degree of. So, I mean, yeah, that let's just go with it. For all of us, I mean, if people would stop putting videos out for a year and, and we had three really good videos that were posted out there, that would fire uh, us fire under our arses to keep energized to keep going because there's realistic stuff but that as you get into the mm. of the online scene it's just so saturated with disappointment 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 like again the video oh here we go again a video from ontario you know and then you got thinker thinker throwing up garbage as usual no. steve steve from how to hunt he lives, he's in my area. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. He, 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 he doesn't bet any data, so I can't do anything. You got Matt Moneymaker from BFRO claiming these are the best Sasquatch prints of 2020. So our team goes up there in their moose tracks. He's not doing any due diligence. So if he's not, and he's the president of BFRO, what pins do we keep on our maps? Well, hold on, Leon. The, the amount of investigation that one particular investigator does with the BFO, BFRO is very small. Yes. yes, yes so, yes. you know, it's a network of independent investigators that are in the, that, that come to their yeah. own conclusions independent of Matt Moneymaker. And right. you know, I can, and and can say that, but the problem is whether you're in any system, your work system you're in, our church system, or whatever system you're involved in, your family system, whatever the top standard person is like, it's going to infiltrate down into you know, let me you can just tell it online. Yeah, but it, it's not it's not like that kind of organization. It's yeah, not I like agree. there's a monthly meeting, there's not like there's any training. There is uh, training, and there is a monthly meeting, and he is the president. Oh, no, there's the not. No, yeah. no, no, no. I won't say monthly meeting. What I will say is there is training, and there's money lucrative training. To, for him to announce a, a, an announcement like that's the best SAS of 2020 by making a phone call to Canada, where I live, which is only three hours from our hidden zone. Yeah, I mean, th that's just foolishness. Right. Now, uh, look at... Uh, I don't want to be harping on this, but the bottom line is I, I came online to study what happens to someone who comes into the Bigfoot community and also the Bigfoot community as a system. And I mentioned on uh, Sasquatch Trackways, uh, the, I said, I'm giving you $20,000 worth of information. I've studied this back, the Bigfoot community online. And if we don't change what we're doing, we're going to be here for another 50 years. And Joe, I want to say you've been really quiet. <laughs> I didn't say that you had to be quiet and dead at the same time if you want to jump in here. <laughs> but I'll take where is Bigfoot Okanagan for a thousand, Brian? <laughs> yeah, right. 
<laughs> so uh, it, sounds no, like uh, dis- it sounds like Steve disagrees with you, Leon, but you guys can fight offline about that. I know we're, we're about an hour and 20 minutes in, so I want to shift back to Pat before we close out because I don't know when we'll be able to get this happening again, Pat, and I've wanted to have you on the show. I know you had an experience recently that I saw you post on your channel about, so tell us about your wood-knocking incident that you had, and we'll kind of close out there, I think. Okay, wow. Um, it wasn't super sexy, but, you know, I did a, I did do a half an hour, about a half an hour uh, video on it, uh, which is just me talking about it, right? Um, yeah, I had a wood knock encounter. It kind of weirded me out. Uh, there were a lot of things that didn't make sense about it. Certainly the knocking itself, um, as far as is that a person... Is it natural? You know, um, there was there was things that led up to the actual, you know, wood knock thing happening. But the most bizarre thing about my wood knock encounter, hold on, if I get both quotes up, was was my reaction to it, uh, which I to this day cannot understand. I don't understand my reaction to it. Um uh, I should have, you know, I should have come out guns a blazing, if you will, because that's the kind of person I am out in the woods. I, I, I don't put up with anything, no animal, no trespasser, no nothing. Um, I didn't do that. I had the, like, an opposite reaction. <clears throat> I decided to get out of my tent, not take my gun with me, not take my million candle, uh, candle powered flashlight with me, you know, and and just pee around the tent and then get back in and eventually fall asleep to the wood knocks, like still happening. And that's uh, a weird, that's a weird part of the phenomenon, isn't it? People ask me all the time, like how do people that come on your show have these weird encounters with Bigfoot and even aliens and they just fall asleep? But that's a whole nother woo conversation we can get into. I know oh, you- there was nothing woo about me falling asleep. I was exhausted and I had been drinking. <laughs> well, that's like, the that's yeah. the real that's the reality, folks. It's not yeah. woo, it's whiskey. It yeah. I was I had been drinking, I've been having fun, I was there to have fun. This was not a Bigfoot expedition, guys and gals. <laughs> um I was just camping having fun with my friends and uh you know, that happened to me and I couldn't believe it was happening to me. And I don't know why I got out of the tent, not taking my gun with me, urinated around it, most of it. And uh, and then got back in the tent <laughs> uh, after I just relieved my bladder, you know, five, maybe 10 minutes before that, you know, it was the infrasound that made you had to pee again. Sure. I mean, you know. I don't know. I didn't have equipment set up, Brian, to detect and measure infrasound, uh, you know, so I can't really say objectively. Uh, but uh, it was just weird, man. And uh, truth is, man, I'll never know what that was because uh, because I didn't take my light. I didn't I didn't charge out into the woods going, you know, what the hell? I mean, it couldn't have been more than. 30 yards away, you know, maybe 40 or 50, you know, sound can be weird with elevation, but truth is I'll never know what it was, but I'll know what it wasn't. It wasn't my buddy Ernie playing jokes on me. It wasn't, you know, likely wasn't a trespasser unless they just happened to just happen to retire as a Navy SEAL, you know, pretty much the only person that's going to sneak up and, on me in the woods, not because I'm a badass, but because it's the freaking woods, dude. Like, it's Ernie dark. gets up the next morning, goes, "Who peed in my boots?" Yeah, it's dark. <laughs> it's dark outside. There's a ton of leaf litter. I mean, this is October. You know, it's like I don't know. Did you do the walk down the road exercise? I used to ask you. To no, do the- not yet. I'm. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I haven't done it either, Leon. Damn it! Leave us alone. We're gonna do it, Leon. Right, I, I, Leon, I did. I did my very first. And I, man, I, I hate to sound like a a wuss, man, but I'm not. 
I'm not a super woodsy guy. I just love being out in the woods. I did my first solo camp uh, last week. Nice. And it was it was fantastic. No Sasquatch showed up. Thank God. By the way, I don't try and conjure them up either. This is something <laughs> like Brian. You need to know about me or and these these fine gentlemen who have joined who I've never met before and whoever's watched. I don't go out in the woods to conjure up Sasquatch, man. I'm here to opine until I have the tools to actually observe them. That's my deal. <laughs> there you go. Well, let's close out there. I, I want to thank everybody in the chat. I want to thank everybody who came by and watched tonight. Leon, thank you, man. Joe, you were very quiet, but I appreciate you much. Everybody go check out Leon and Bigfoot Okanagan on YouTube. Make sure you check out Joe at Western New York Bigfoot Investigation Group on YouTube. Tyler and Denny, my buddies from Kentucky X Files, you can get them. You can get those guys on YouTube. You can get them anywhere you listen to your podcast. Steve Coles from Squatch DTV and SquatchDetective.com, and Pat from Squatch Talk. Check him out on YouTube. I can't thank you guys enough for making my first live show the most fun I've had with my clothes on all week. So I really, really, really appreciate it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, you guys have a great night. We're going to start the outro. I will talk to you soon enough. And you can catch Sasquatch Odyssey anywhere you get your podcast. We have amazing encounter stories. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and hit that like, and leave your comments. We appreciate you guys. You guys have a great night. They say you don't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Brian even left or what? <laughs> I'm still here. I just have my mic off. There we go. Yeah, I just want to point out that Steve and I are in cahoot. Or are like I'm not clashing at Steve because he, he, I just come from a different thing. I am just sick to death of again the, the mosquitoes in the tents uh, stories because I just give us something solid, you know. And, and if I don't have that, I don't know if you want to call that uh, energy. Uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Brain damage. Um, yeah. You'll think you'll come up with it. Yeah. Uh, motivation? Uh, like motivation, but, you know, no, passion. That's it. That's it. Inspiration. You know, that passion of trying to emotionally get that across to the viewers, we got to hammer that into the viewers of do what you got to do. Be careful. The letdown for me has been all these higher ranking people 
doing uh, that I look up to when I first got involved in it, and, and you guys all know them now, right? Because we've been in for a while. That you realize these people have no idea, you know, like to, to Steve how to hunt. Well, you know, he's got two, yeah, he's got 250,000. He's just a bullshitter, you know, he's probably a narcissist or a sociopath as well. But just yeah. FYI, I think people are still watching us. So, <laughs> yeah, we're still live. Yeah, yeah, we're still live. So, this is like the after show. They got the, yeah. oh, the outro okay. and oh, the 28 live. people that oh, stuck you know, around. We're, we're, after. <laughs> we're just, we're just going to keep the party going. Hey. Yeah, I thought you guys ended. That's why I left. Yeah, well, that's no, why we're, we're still live. So, everybody oh. is here. Yeah. But again, it just doesn't make sense to me. And that's the thing. It's like, Steve, what I appreciate about him is, I mean, he does call me down a bit, uh, but I haven't ran into certain people online. I wouldn't be online anymore. I deal with craziness for a life, for a living of a life. I mean, I'm crazy too, but I mean, I, just can't, I can't handle, I just can't handle the non solidness of things, you know, like, I didn't get a chance to ask Doug this, and I mentioned, uh, eventually ask him it or whatever like that. When he's talking about, you know, there's no cerebellum or whatever he calls it in the middle of it. Yeah, Moose don't have that. Moose hair doesn't have that. Mm. You know, and there's hundreds and tons of moose out there. So I don't understand. And I, we have people in our show. Joe's back. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's going to keep the party going, folks. Uh, the 27 people that are watching. He gonna he's got a new mic and he hasn't said a word tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my fault from the other night. I, I was he's muted. muted. He's <laughs> muted. He's talking. He's muted. <laughs> he's muted. You look very mature tonight. Oh, your mic's up. Yeah. Let's see if you had. How about now? How about now? There you go. Okay. There you go. How about what now? What did I say? You look very mature yeah. tonight. Joe, I must say, you do like, I? You, know, you were looking is, very moderating. You took care of things in the chat. You were yeah, very, I, I you turn your gain up just a little yeah. bit, Joe. Really? Yeah. That way, you don't have to lean in all the time. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, no, I, I like to lean in because I like to talk like this sometimes. You know, that, that, you're like a sex worker, dude. <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh yeah. shit! You should have told us that we're gonna be live. <laughs> well, we're still live, so I mean, there's 28 people hanging on like hair in a biscuit. They're hanging on. They want more. But we are gonna end because I got I, my ass is hurting. I've been sitting in this chair for an hour and a half, so we're gonna have to end at some point. But seriously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much for coming on and making my first live show it, as fun as it could possibly be for me. Like everybody that was here was people i respect like i said in the beginning and i i really enjoy having conversations with you guys and i love the different perspectives and nobody's drinking from the same jar of kool-aid so there's always something different to be explored and something different to to be found out and that's what it's really all about i mean we all say it all the time we're all looking for those answers for ourselves so i really appreciate everybody being here everybody in the chat has been phenomenal except for the sex bots and the few trolls that we had that the moderators took care of so I appreciate that very much, but we'll have to do it again. I, there will be more Sasquatch Odyssey live coming. Now that I've I've busted my cherry on YouTube, I will be back for you guys at some point in time. So maybe we can, you know, have you guys back again. I, I really, really enjoyed it from the bottom of my heart. I thank you all for being here for sure. Well, cool. You did great, Brian. Well, uh, I appreciate it, man. That's yeah. yeah. That, my two cents. You did really well. It's it's hard to conduct these uh, these goofballs here, including myself. <laughs> I, I'm one of the goofballs, and you conducted them well. So, well, I appreciate it very much. On, uh, everybody, everybody that's here, job. I consider a friend. So that's why I invited you guys to be here, and I appreciate oh. it more than you'll ever know. Oh. I feel so warm inside. Yeah, oh, Tyler, my little right. my little Robin, one of the Robins. Uh, well, I'm gonna hop off of here. You guys have a great night, and. We'll we'll be in touch tomorrow. I'm sure. Absolutely. Right, yeah. You're hopping off like we're going offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're really going to end the broadcast at this point. Like I, <laughs> I played my fancy outro and all that other shit, so we really got to end. This. I actually <laughs> stayed for half of it, and I was dancing. I was like, "Man, this is sketchy. This is sketchy." I get more people emailing me about that song. If I change the outro to my, I use that on the the regular show. And I've changed it a couple of times, and people literally email me. Four or five people a week will email me and say, bring the old outro back. I'm like, okay, it's, it's pretty catchy, so we'll see. 
but thanks a lot, guys. Y'all have a great night, and I'll, I'll talk to y'all soon. Okay. Have a good one. Yeah. Hey, guys.